Hello there and welcome back to the Agassino Zynga show with me your host Agassino Zynga and this is episode number 456 that's 456 456 how are you guys doing how are you feeling great amazing good to hear you know what to do if you're watching this youtube smash the like button below leave me a comment click subscribe turn your notification bell all that good stuff if you listen via the podcast app um, please leave me a five star review specifically on the apple podcast app i'm not sure if the other ones have the same sort of function but if they do leave me a five star review or something within that range i'll be greatly appreciated to help get the show up the little you know algorithm boost and all that malarkey i've seen a couple of reviews on there already from people and i'm really really grateful for them i've got about 10 ratings i think so far which is way better than one so if i can get a couple more i'd be greatly appreciated it doesn't cost you a thing cost takes about a couple of minutes especially if you already sign into your itunes account make sure you leave me a five-star review on apple Podcasts or whatever podcast streaming platform you're using that will be greatly appreciated and of course support via patreon is always more than welcome at patreon.com forward slash a g o s t a n h o and for you know the exchange of you exchanging one dollar or one pound to me i give you one bonus show per week so jump on patreon.com forward slash a g o s t a n h o to get access to my bonus show only available on there for as little as one dollar going up to about 14 i think so whatever you can afford whatever's in your range that you want to back the kid with make sure you do that and of course all the fun to that will go towards good equipment studios all that malarkey so make sure you do that i will be appreciated if you do oh mate here we are back in the hot seat hope you are good wherever you may be i'm feeling pretty dandy as you can tell it's about what 6 a.m you know over here um, i'm recording this in the morning I was meant to go on a run now, but I thought, you know what, let me get the recording in because I won't have time to do it later because I've got a bit of a jam-packed day later on today, which means I have to kind of, you know, push little things back here and there. But I mentioned it prior, how happy I am now that gyms have opened. It's allowed me to have a better structure in my day. I'm sleeping way sooner than I was prior, you know, prior to gym being open. I have to confess, I was one of the people that was staying up until sometimes 8 a.m. in the morning, 6, 7 um, obviously it does a UFC fight out to have until 6 anyway but I was staying up late 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 it was getting ridiculous do you know what I mean um, mostly because I just had nothing to wake up to which maybe was a sign of depression I'm not too sure but regardless I wasn't in the best of moods and then um, with that structure with the gym it helped and you know people can say oh you can go out running but unfortunately twofold number one running is really difficult to do because I'm you know I, I used to run 20 to 30 miles per week so i know how hard it is to go out there and do it no one really wants to do it but once you do do it it's flipping amazing the runner's high is real and then number two because of all this extra weight i put on running is actually painful now i understand why bigger people don't like running it's legitimately the most um it's legitimately maybe the most painful thing you could do to your body aside from maybe walking upstairs when you're bigger because i guess when you're walking upstairs you get that feeling as if like you're gonna lose your breath like you could faint and then hit your head in the wall whatever right you get a little bit fatalistic with it but um you know you'll be okay if you just gather yourself and take a couple of breaths you'll be fine usually but when you're running like especially outdoors there's no there's no telling what could happen right you could uh, like the amount of times i've tripped even when i was in my best shape especially where i live now i'd wake up super early in the morning i wouldn't really do a warm-up i'll just run because I just believe in running as your warm-up. And then I just like, you know, I'll be still in that morning days and I'll trip and fall. And I'll be fine. But sometimes I was imagine myself, imagine I was older and I was a bit more brittle. Or I didn't really have the strength for the muscle to kind of, you know, um, what's that word called? To brace my fall. Imagine how much that would have absolutely effed me over in the morning, right? It's like 7 a.m., 6 a.m. in the morning. And here I am covered in flipping rubble and shit all over my arms. And if there's one time you want to, really <laughs> see how uh, people's lack of humanity yeah people's lack of humanity usually has um uh, a starting time and it's not 6 a.m the amount of times i've fallen over on the street and no one's come to my aid has been really hilarious i think most of the time you know they realize you know you're a young kid you're out there running you're always in good shape you'll be fine but it's just hilarious and i've had some epic stacks i've had some stacks where it would look good on the flipping freeze frame you know those kind of stacks where i'm kind of like flying through the air i've had some mad ones but again like i said 
um, running bigger is just difficult um, and I think that's one of the lessons I've kind of learned from this obviously I'm losing the weight little by little I've kind of come down about 10 pounds now I think 10 15 pounds I think last time I checked so I'm I'm going you know pretty well pretty steady just taking it day by day making sure the diet is on check not eating after a certain time fasting for most of the time you know 20 to 4 I'm doing 20 40 of that zero fasting but what I'm definitely not going to do going forward I'm never ever going to allow myself to get in this bad of a shape again never again obviously because i'm getting older too so you know it's just diff every year as every year goes by it's just difficult to do those things especially when you take a year off i think it's easier no let me take it back it's probably easier to maintain or to keep weight off if you're just continually working out right and then because i think someone said a good little kind of tip if you're doing fitness or whatever is to make sure you don't ever miss two days back to back that's usually a good primer because that means effectively uh, in a week that lasts seven days if you go on a monday you most likely will get three to four sessions in per week sessions in per week which makes which is pretty good it's more than good right it's it's probably way above average i would assume for most people most people probably work out what twice maybe three times a week if you can get three to four that's really you're really pushing the upper echelons and at the moment i'm doing about six right yeah i have my off days usually on a sunday i do like you know gym monday wednesday friday and then i usually run tuesday thursday saturday so or some sort of like you know cardiovascular thought workout but if you can sometimes not miss two days you're usually good but in this regard especially with covid and you know i just i don't know what happened i think like most people i just turned i hope no i'm not gonna say most people because i don't like to be like the same like everybody else and i want to i want to be extraordinary in this regard but I just think I gave myself an excuse because I think because I was going at such high speeds and I was doing so much before I naturally just like you know not naturally I just decided to give myself an excuse to just not continue at that pace I don't think because if anything with the world going crazy the one thing that was um constant that I could have just kept on doing was working out was doing my thing that I was doing reading writing all this sort of stuff I could just continue doing that whilst the world was on fire because that was the thing that would have gave me some level of um, contentment or peace right and that would be able to be of use to people as well when they needed help but I purposely chose you know to kind of just you know rest on my laurels get a bit lazy and stuff and now in a situation where I spent most of the if we calculate the time, it might have been between six to eight months just doing nothing, not even a single push-up, zero, which is really unheard of for me. Usually, I always do something. I don't have a lot of equipment here. You know, I've got a foam roller, a couple of skipping ropes, an ab mat, you know, a yoga mat, but I usually do something. There's a star, a couple of few star jumps, some burpees, push-ups. I do something. I don't ever not do anything. So, for, to do absolutely zero, don't get me wrong, it was enjoyable, but some of the things in between the habits like you know going to tesco's and buying snacks every two minutes you know eating mcdonald's on a tuesday like no 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 i can't do that anymore so now i've just got my standard way of doing things i was doing prior you know working out basically monday to saturday um saving all the shitty meals for the weekend if that running work, work lifting weights and just continuing doing that but the one thing i'm struggling with at the moment which i kind of want to get a grip on is my squats air squats i'm not sure if you guys are familiar and if you guys are good at them and i don't know if it's just um what's that thing called if it's just the way your body's made up some people just have to work harder at them than others but my ankles and my hips have always been really tight i'm not sure if it's if probably both probably my ankles and my hips which basically means whenever i squat down to the floor i kind of have to lift my my heels up i have to kind of do it on my toes i can't do it with my feet flat um, which then results obviously me having problems doing back squats me having problems with my running form it leads into loads of different things <clears throat> so at the moment i'm thinking of well at the moment before i go to gym i'll do like you know <clears throat> i'll do some exercises with my hips and obviously open up my feet a bit open up my ankles as much as i can and when i go to the gym i kind of get a weight that i put in front of me like with a dumbbell or a plate and do some squats with that using it as a counterbalance but still it's not the best because i'm a little bit too far back i kind of want to be over the arches of my foot but obviously my knees aren't coming forward enough because it feels like my achilles on the back of my heels are the tightest bit right they need to get softened up a little bit but i think that's just going to be with time so i was thinking of doing this little challenge courtesy of this guy called Edo Portal who was made famous via Conor McGregor mostly I think right um, but he's a, basically a movement specialist guy right that he does really amazing sort of like a body weight sort of exercises that essentially 
tap into you know every single um limbic fiber of your body whatever that thing is called right so he's a really cool dude and i think he's basically says you know movement is the key to life if it feeds into so many different things if you're unable to move you're unable to put yourself in a great position great position leads to bad form bad form blah, 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 blah. you know that sort of stuff and he's got this interesting challenge that he does called 30 30 squat challenge by Ida Portal, which i never have been able to do all the way through i kind of think i got to about 14 days and i kind of um you know uh put up my gloves but essentially what it is is obviously you can got here on the page it's got the death of good posture it says the human body is a beautiful design and certainly not one or to be manipulated or forcefully changed however what that is exactly what much of western the world has set out to do in the modern times just take a look at the original caveman and it's easy to understand that the human body was certainly not designed to be seated in a chair and cooped up in the office for eight to ten hours no, it's not the way that human body should be treated, but it's, it's certainly the way Western society has been going quite some time. And the longer we continue to treat our bodies in this manner, the more physical and health elements will continue to develop as a society. Um, so he says developing a poor posture really can have a whole range of significant side effects. Throughout this blog post, we mainly focus on a deep squat position and in particular the 30-30 squat challenge, which is designed by Israeli movement guru. Ido Portal. The reason we want to discuss a deep squat is because it's natural position for the human body, right? Which at the moment I'm not feeling that because it hurts. Which is what if we practice it more often, we'll be able to correct and return our posture back to its intended state. So obviously you've got here mobility of the ankles, knee, hip, thoracic mobility, stability. Um, if you uh, also it's a benefit. So if you if you get ankle mobility, increases your vasti. RF activation ratio, whether that is increase your post activation potential movement, multi joint plantar plantar movement. But yeah, it basically it's a challenge. So it's thirty thirty. Um, having a um, difficulty squatting, let's work on it. It says so for the next thirty days, spend thirty minutes a day of ass to grass, relaxed spine, flat foot squat simple set up a timer in your smartphone for 30 minutes and every time you go down to squat let it run speaking to the phone waiting for a train etc commit and get huge benefits in mobility knee hip and health digestion and more join the squat 33 challenge on facebook group and post your picture and experience support each other don't forget to share with your friends and I remember this page because this is when I had my old Facebook page. I had quite a few of these movement specialist guys on there because I went to a couple seminars here and there. And it's pretty cool to see the before and after of people that started doing a squat, um, that couldn't get down to a squat or did it in a certain way. And then what they looked like at the end of the 30 days, it really does help. So, it, but again, it's difficult as fuck. You're going to be sweating buckets but i need to do it because at the moment i'm too tight and when i'm doing back squats i have to rely on putting place under my heels which obviously isn't the best thing long term so i'm definitely going to give this stuff a go um to kind of open myself up but basically the message of the day is just that i'm never going to allow myself to get this big again i can't do it man because it's so difficult to get it's so difficult to work out first of all get the weight off is fine just starting to work out makes it very that much difficult because you're carrying so much extra weight i mean and then your body's just what's that one called um it just feels like a a a, a, a tub of glue right you're having to kind of unstick and you know shake about a little bit um once you shake it about you'll be fine but i definitely have a lot more sympathy now for people who are far bigger than i was at the beginning who kind of just don't want to even get started because that feeling of un comfortableness and awkwardness it's just you don't want it really do you know what I mean and this is someone coming from myself who was an avid gym person a workout person before the lockdown and just spent the last what 14 months maybe maybe less than that maybe more who knows just being a little bit sedentary and I'm already feeling a little bit ugh but now we're about what a month in since the gyms are open it should be this is the fourth week I'm pretty sure so I'm feeling good man I'm feeling flipping good and I hope you are too Anyway, let's jump on into some topics and get it going, innit? Let's get it going. Um, first things first, obviously with all the protests happening at United, we've had to kind of um, delay or sorry, postpone some of our matches, especially um, off the back of what happened against Liverpool. So now going forward, what, they've, uh, what, do you, what the Premier League have decided to do is to give us four fixtures across seven days. We're playing on May 6th against Roma, of course, just today. Um, that's basically a guarantee that we should go through. Hopefully, nothing crazy happens. May 9th, we've got Aston Villa away at home. 
so away away at home uh, May 11th we've got Leicester at home and then May 13th we've got the ultimate game the one that got postponed in the first place May 13th against Liverpool now so far from what I've heard in the grapevine the United supporters that went and protested against the uh, Glazer occupation of the club I'll call it they're still going to go through with more protests at all these matches they're not going to stop so they've decided that this is where they kind of draw the line so it's going to be interesting to see what ends up happening um, with those protests and if they actually lead to anything or if the governments and the police are going to be smart enough to just basically prevent any fans from getting anywhere near the stadium and just basically or, or kind of have them sneak in before I don't know just to kind of make sure the games go ahead because that's a lot of money and revenue these guys won't be able to kind of generate and shit from this sort of stuff in it and no one wants that sort of embarrassment but in the other side of the argument which I saw from a guy called Duncan Castles who's got this really good podcast called the Transfer Window Podcast he um, alluded to the fact that supposedly the thinking is with the Glazers if they sign a marquee player that we'll suddenly all forget about it so the plan is to just sign like a Harry Kane or to be in the or to kind of submit a bid to have for Harry Kane Jaden Sancho or something so that the fan base can kind of get distracted a little bit with that brand new potential shiny toy and stop protesting and then finish all the games of the season that's what and then obviously not have to answer for their crimes of joining the Super League and just terrible and being generally shitty owners who knows um part of me leads part of me thinks if you've seen the video of that Sky reporter, I think, um, chasing down, uh, is it Avram? I think it's Avram, Avram, is it Avram Glazer or is it Joe? I'm not sure which one it is, but the one that looks like a freak, right? He's chasing him down the street somewhere in America and he's, you know, storming off and not even giving her any sort of attention and really looking kind of entitled and just annoying and just the kind of, you know, the kind of dude you'd want to, I don't know, you want to push into a wall, right? And just say hi. Is <laughs> that kind of dude, right? Um, it, may, it leads me to believe that they're probably used to this sort of level of backlash. They probably know how um, derided they are within the football space. This is why they probably don't, which is why they just, you know, refuse to speak to the fans. They're probably very much aware of it and they're probably going to just ride it out. That's my um, skeptical part. But my optimist part of it is, they're going to realize that it's not worth the hassle. None of the fans want them to be there. There's nothing they can do to appease a portion of the fans. I think some fans will obviously be a little bit more receptive to the lies than others or to the, you know, to the kind of PR games. But overall, it's basically done for them as ownerships. They should just kind of, you know, sell up and move on. They've made a ton of money off the back of the club anyway. It's not like they're losing out on anything, you know what I mean? So who knows, man? Who knows going forward? Um... I'm going to continue watching this pace, pace, watching this space and hoping for the best. And, you know, you never know, man, maybe in the future you might see United actually taken over by owners that actually give a crap about football and want us returning back to those glory years. Because ironically enough, if we have owners actually care about winning trophies and, you know, um, winning league titles, then inevitably the money will come too because we're that big of a club right we kind of built on a history of winning the big major trophies domestic you know and, and european if you build on that legacy especially with the added attention and social media and stuff you're only going to get bigger so i don't really understand this whole like withholding funds not really investing in the club probably it's just bizarre it really is bizarre anyway so next on the list what do we have here oh yeah we have this we have this wild, wild, wild story courtesy of the New York Post. It says, woman sucker punched in the head and robbed in New York City subway station video. You would assume she's got robbed though, innit? You wouldn't assume someone getting sucker punched in the head is just like a little tap, you know? It's not like a little love tap to get her attention. But when I saw this, I thought to myself, you know what? New York is back, baby. New York is back. Um, well, the last time I went was, what, 2000 and... Was it 10 or 2009? And, you know, that was mostly to go and do the whole pilgrimage to go visit the Supreme Store in Lafayette over there in New York. I, you know, I've heard so much about it. I obviously went to go check out the New York thing store too. That was when it moved from Lower East Side to whatever new place it was. And what was his face was there? Um, uh, Widow Dave was working behind the till at the New York thing when I went there. So it was a great experience. We got to pop into the Mighty Is it No, we got Mighty Healthy. What was the store we went to? all the alien creatures and shit what was that brand called again oh yeah yeah i forgot the name of it but they kind of had like a really um graffiti style um aesthetic loads of weird monsters what are they called not mighty healthy 
Oh, I forgot what it's called, but you know, the, if you listen to this and you know about streetwear culture, you will understand what the brand was. And we went in a great time, but I do remember being on a subway and feeling like, no wonder people get robbed on these things, right? They feel they feel like you're going to the hood. Just being on a subway alone feels like you're you're going to a, a project somewhere. It's mad, isn't it? How it is over there. Um, obviously, the 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 kind of what do you call it? Um, the melange of people that are on those subways is obviously quite similar to how it is in the UK, but I'd say it's probably a little bit more rougher there in the States because, you know, naturally I'm assuming the disparity between the poorest and the richest in New York is just insane. Whereas I feel like here in the UK, we kind of have a good way of masking those things. People are a little bit more, I would say humble, but they're a little bit more modest with their wealth. So you don't really see that sort of stuff. You know, it's, 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 it's a whole different game. And obviously it depends what time you go on the train. You go on a train here in the UK from like, you know, what, anytime between 5 to 8 a.m. Most of the people you're seeing on there are people of the same, you know, socioeconomic level, people from, you know, uh, foreign countries that have come here to, you know, to make something happen and give their kids and their family a better life. And then obviously as the hours progress, especially if you go, leave Liverpool Street for the hours of three to four or three to five you see a whole different type of people who live in who live over here in the UK and have a far far maybe you know healthier bank balance let's say so anyway this story is from New York Post it said disturbing new surveillance video footage released by a New York um, uh, NYPD shows a moment that the mugger sucker punched a woman in an East Village subway station and rips off her backpack the 23rd victim was walking out of the L train station at 14th Street and 1st Avenue looking down at her phone which is always a bad move right looking down at your phone when you're crossing the street looking down at your phone when you're um, entering a train station looking down at your phone when you're entering a shop is never a good move i've always been under thinking and this is uh, and i've never had an attempt in jacking on me but i'm just kind of being safe because i know how easy it is to take someone's smartphone out of their hand when it's just like you know you're walking down the street you just got it like this it's just prime for someone just to take out your hand so i've always been under the assumption that if you do go out with your smartphone and you want to check it whilst you're on about you're best to check it when you're in a place when you're standing at bus stop um in a station like standing right so you can kind of look around where you are you're in a restaurant you're in a bar you're in a shop whatever that's where i usually kind of do i try and stop and then kind of look around and then check my phone i don't just walk around looking at my phone whilst i'm out and about i don't think that's a very smart tactic to do especially during these covid times which we'll go on later it says a few minutes before 6 p.m sunday when the stranger ran up behind and clobbered her on the side of the head according to the police and a video clip released early um he then grabbed her bag which contained her macbook air oh no debit card and credit cards and ran off cop said the victim refused medical attention on the scene for swelling on her head so she's you know jesus christ imagine the trauma the suspect was still at large on tuesday cops describing as a 30 year old <laughs> Uh, and five feet five, weighing two hundred pounds, with a light complexion. How did they think he was thirty specifically? I would say for around that age. Um, he was last seen wearing a black winter ba uh, hat, a light coloured scarf around his neck, and red and black jacket. He was carrying a large blue bag. So I wonder how easy it would be to get someone like this in the uh, because I imagine there's a lot of surveillance underneath the subway, right? Obviously, hence this video. Let's watch the clip and see uh, what that looks like. Oof. That was a solid hit as well on the side of the head. And let's go back again. Bam. Yo, he absolutely decked her, innit? it? She went flying, hit her head on the little card machine thing, and he ripped off the bag. And plus, she, she, she did that annoying thing that a lot of people do where they carry their bag like a tote. So you just have it on one strap. And it's always really low because they don't want to be bothered to kind of, oh, it hurts my back when they put it on two shoulders. It's like, that's what happens basically when you hold your bag like that. And, it's, and it doesn't really look like a bag that you're meant to put stuff in it. It kind of, you know those kind of bags that looks more like a decoration as opposed to like a functional backpack. Um, it looks like if you put too many things in it, you know, the straps will start to tear the seams. But Jesus Christus. He came through with his flipping bandana mask over his face and clobbered her. He was obviously looking for somebody, a lick somewhere. In sandals too, you know. Americans are wild, bruv. Shorts and sandals. This guy just jacked her bag. Yowzers. And you know what's funny too? You know what's uh, not funny? You know what's sad? She probably knew he was there. She probably had a bad feeling. She probably was like, her sixth sense probably going off like, danger, danger, danger. But by the time she realized there was danger you know she was already seeing stars and her phone was out of her I'm, I'm i'm assuming he took the phone too or did he lose the phone maybe he left the phone because you know there was no point because it's going to break it i'm assuming you can probably assuming there's probably more potential of you getting money 
extracting money out of a laptop that you've stolen as opposed to a phone, right? It's pretty useless. But shizers, man. Shizers. New York is back in it. And again, this is a sign of the times we're living in at the moment. You know, COVID, uh, people are suffering. People are in dire straits. They're trying to, you know, make the best of a bad situation. They don't have any government assistance. Jobs are out of the blue. Families completely torn apart. You know, that could be one. Or it could just be people taking advantage of situations similar to the protests that are happening later in, you know, last year in summer. Oh, Jesus, they've got his face in full HD, mate. Jesus, I wonder if they're able to catch the guy. So, um, yeah, look, they've got his whole face there, his whole face. So, obviously, people are taking advantage of the situation and just saying, oh, yeah, I'm, I'm desolate. I don't have anything, so I'm going to rob people. That could just be an excuse, um, I think, as well, going, <laughs> going forward. But hope the girl is okay, man. Hope she's okay. But, again, this is another... If any, if anybody needed a reminder as to why lockdowns aren't probably the best thing going forward, I think we've all learned a lesson as a society you know people in government um people within certain economies or certain business sectors uh people within education healthcare, uh, people with families um young people i think people we've all realized now collectively that lockdowns just don't work in the long term unless you're able to do lockdowns like new zealand um you know places in in asia like even china when you know they had outbreaks so basically to lock everybody inside their homes and tape them up and you know basically force them to quarantine by having you know armed guards outside their doors and shit which obviously we can't do because we don't live in an authoritarian or for authoritarian country but unless you can do that or unless you're living in a place like new zealand where you're on an island and you could essentially close all your borders and manage the virus and control the virus and contain the virus a lot better than other places that are landlocked it's just impossible to have any sort of long-term success by keeping people locked down and the negatives just far outweigh the benefits they just do you know leads to you know people losing jobs families people getting mugged like this in broad daylight under the subway all of these things are basically a consequence i think of lockdown so um that's basically a lesson of the day and lockdowns never again and obviously if you've got a phone don't be walking and staring at your phone at the same time. Recipe for disaster. If you've got a laptop in your backpack, at least put it on both shoulders. Because anybody could just run past you and pull it off your arm too. It actually doesn't, you don't need to be clobbered on the head. So yeah, a word to the wise. Word to the wise. We're talking about this. Da, 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 da. We're talking about word to the wise. There's this really good interview that I read with... Um, uh, so what's that? There's a really good interview that I read. Oh, okay, this off the screen. A really good interview that I read with Rolling Stone, with Axel Bronson, talking about his weight loss and his new book that he's got out at the moment. It's really cool. I really recommend you check it out. This is off the back of watching him on Joe Rogan. He did the 420 episode, which was really cool. So you know, great guest to have on there for, to celebrate 420. And Axel Bronson looks amazing, man. He's lost a ton of weight. He looks incredible. Um. The only thing I'd say that's concerning about it, which is com coming from somebody that was big myself, is that he's doing exactly the same thing that I was doing, where you kind of, you know, it's, it's, it's interesting <clears throat> that from what I've seen so far, most people that are big, most people, or people that I've seen online who've kind of shared their story about transforming themselves from being really obese to being fit, have all got the same thing personality-wise. They're addictive personalities, which I have. Which, you know, when I get into something, I go hard. If I do something, I go all the way. It's never, like, in between for me, right? And it could be beneficial. It could be destructive. And I've seen with Action Brunson, especially the things that he was saying on Joe Rogan, the fact that he had to have a workout before he started the podcast. And he went to Joe's gym, the Onnit gym. And he was talking to this guy here from Rolling Stone. And, and you know, talking about his transformation and stuff. And some things I've seen through, you know, reading between the lines. It feels like he's replaced one addiction, which might have been food and gluttony and all that malarkey with another which is working out of course you know the benefits of working out far away the benefits are just you know gorging your face to death but it's interesting that as addicts the only way we can actually manage to live in this crazy world is to just replace our destructive addictions with addictions that are actually positive and net positive to our lives there's anything we can do there's nothing else we can do to make our lives it's nothing we can't there's no other switch we can turn on that's the only switch that we know and it works really well um you know you see people you always see these people that are kind of you know drug addicts and alcoholics who end up doing iron mans and shit you know what i mean it's just a standard thing for those kind of dudes because when you're in that groups of addiction in that way it usually is a 
prerequisite or an indication that your personality is just like that you just kind of get addicted to tiny things and unfortunately you got addicted to you know hate and all that stuff and then if you switched it to running and going on your bike and sitting on a rowing machine for four hours you essentially will do it so um, I'm definitely going to pick up his new book um, it's called um, Effort I'll Start Tomorrow really really cool um, I can't wait to check it out but yeah check out this interview here with Rolling Stones really enlightening interview and then of course check out his interview he did with Joe Rogan I really enjoyed that one next one let's talking about weights and being a bigger person we've got this insane article here courtesy of Scary Mummy um, and um, I don't know at first I laughed at this and I was really you know it really made me belly laugh and the ridiculousness of life and people's you know unbridled need for attention all this malarkey but then i kind of felt a bit sad so it says courtesy of scary mummy it says test daily reveals she's in recovery for anorexia uh, i repeat that again test daily reveals she's in recovery for anorexia this woman here says she's anorexic do you know how insane that is when you just look at the picture and you look at the words like what anyway it continues um it says, Tess Daly recently revealed on Twitter, which is where you reveal all things, right? Um, you reveal your deepest, darkest secrets to strangers on Twitter. It says, Tess Daly recently revealed on Twitter that she's anorexic and in recovery, opening up on Instagram about her experiences with an eating disorder. Model Tess Daly is frequently open with fans on social media about her struggles with mental health, along with using a platform to discuss her relationship with body image and body positivity. This whole platform as well thing is really annoying. I hate this whole, like, platform... Um, you know, uh, having to get your facts right with everything you're speaking about. This is a, for instance, for me, this is a podcast where I just basically shoot off the hip about stuff that I've seen online that I think is interesting. And then I share it with you guys. And obviously if you share it with you guys and you guys resonate with it, I'm super happy. But you don't come on here to listen to my thoughts and opinion of stuff because I am a bastion of fact checking and, you know, getting out the right narrative and stuff. You're just hearing one guy's interpretation of the world events. You might disagree completely with what I have to say, but that's the beauty of listening to podcasts. You want to hear what that person's perspective is on something that you've maybe seen or haven't seen. And to somehow think that it's a platform for change is insane. Like, what is test daily or test daily test holiday or any person that's got a quote-unquote platform really done for society at large most of it is self-serving because it's your platform it doesn't help anybody else but there's this idea that your platform should be used to do this it's like what what is wrong with these people anyway continue that the fact of issues also shuts down unsolicited and unnecessary commentary about her health and appearance which is odd because she's meant to be a plus-size model but she doesn't want you to have any unsolicited opinions on her looks uh, but the mum of two just got more candid than ever, revealing that she is in recovery from eating disorder, reminding internet trolls and body shamers that people of all sizes can struggle with their disorder eating and that it's never okay to comment on someone's weight or perceived health. Do you know how insane that is? Like, there's so many insane triggers. So, you're, so from what I've seen of her, she's a fat activist, but she's also got that kind of modeling influencer thing going on because there's a lot of pictures of her in lingerie and cool outfits and shit on her Instagram feed. So I'm going to assume most of those feeds are ads, right? If they're not, then I apologize, but I assume they are ads. So in some way, shape or form, she's been hired as an influencer, like modeling wise, right? So she's an IG model, but I'm just going to say models, not to be derogatory, right? It's, models are models. So she gets paid to put clothes on and advertise them on Instagram which is essentially opening yourself up to people to comment on what you look like, but you're not allowed to do that. Then she's in recovery for an eating disorder that usually only afflicts people when they're really skinny, right? Usually, you know, when you think of anorexia, you think of somebody with an eating disorder who's unable to keep food in their bodies and are purposely eating away or not eating away in order to kind of vomit or eating away or not eating in a way in order to kind of keep a particular you know frame and size because in their head they feel like that that's that's how they look the best there's that girl on youtube who's kind of famous for it right who people try and help all the time but she's basically adamant that no in my head this actually makes complete sense that people have kind of left her to her own devices for now and until she needs help or until she reaches out people should then go and help her but for now leave her to do her thing so usually when you think of it, actually you think of very very rakey thing people who look you know sickly thick you see their rib cage popping out from the side of their body just like not, not, not something really pleasing to see to the eye but you know everyone kind of has to go through their own journey and you're hoping they come out of it from the other side so she wants to be an inter a fat activist a model but you don't have to comment on what she looks like. And she wants to have an eating disorder. But you're also not allowed to comment on that. What? 
It continues. Holiday first took to Twitter last Friday, April 30th, to address the speculation about her weight. She wrote to everyone that keeps saying, Oh, it's sweet here. And to everyone that keeps saying you're looking really healthy or you're losing a lot of weight, keep it up. Don't comment on my weight or perceived health. Keep it to yourself. Thanks. I'm surprised you didn't do any claps in between. There's a very particular way people are that talk on the internet. And they usually... <sighs> That's the thing though, isn't it? I feel a bit sad for because I think people that have this sort of warped perception of the world or of themselves um, or of their place in society, um, there's usually no turning this around, right? This is just the way somebody is. It's, it's very rare that someone that does this sort of like clapping emoji thing and speaks in that sort of cadence or has this weird idea that you're um, somehow, you know, words are violence. And if you're telling her that she's looking amazing because she did 10 burpees as encouragement is somehow a triggering offense. There's nothing that can really, you know, um, bring this woman into a more, what's that, rational there's nothing that could just make this woman suddenly realize that she's being a little bit wild in the morning, right? She's never going to come around. That's just how she is, which is a, which is sad when you think about the good that she could do overall, you know, with, with her platform being the size that she is and being where she's come from legitimately. But hey, it continues. Healing from my eating disorder and everyone is out here thinking it's okay to comment on my weight loss. Jesus Christ. Um, the next day she followed it with a tweet saying i'm in recovery and recovering i'm not ashamed to say out loud anymore i'm a result of a culture that celebrates fitness and equates that to worth but i get to write my own narrative now i'm finally able to care for the body that i've punished my entire life i'm finally free i don't know man i really don't know if you're finally free and i don't know like part of me wants to laugh at this sort of stuff but i do have a lot of sympathy for people like this because i was a bigger dude right at my at my biggest i was like 200 and what 70 pounds or something which is what 17 stone which is massive considering i'm only six foot that's really really big and i never really viewed myself as huge at the time right i kind of kind of gave myself this weird idea that i was just big boned and i was stocky but obviously when i started getting into wearing really nice clothes and started going into shops and wanting to dress a certain way i quickly realized that my shape just was too big in general forget sample sizes for whatever range they had in the store from smallest to the largest i couldn't fit in any of it and it kind of made me think you know what i kind of want to wear these clothes they're not going to change them to make me feel comfortable so i'd rather um you know go on a diet work out and get to a point where i can fit in the clothes to you know to my shape then demand the world to change for my inability to you know keep a donut out of my mouth for instance so i have sympathy for people like this i really do i i, I should be laughing but i have sympathy for it but also i think it's insane to be a fat activist and to somehow say that people can't comment on your weight when specifically what you're selling is your weight you're selling the idea that you should be comfortable at any size right you should feel empowered you should feel like you are not less than if you're that bigger size which i agree with and the irony is i think she mentioned in that post right that um what it says here she mentioned here uh da, 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 um and the result of a culture that celebrates fitness and equates that to worth the irony of it is is that the people that have done that that have equated fitness to worth are other women that's why i always say the enemy of all women is actually other women not men really is the truth men women are the real enemy of women because fashion magazines have kind of perpetuated this idea that for some reason if you're a woman and you're over the age of 26 that you're essentially expired most fashion advertisements contain people that probably can't afford the brands that they're wearing anyway and they will happen to be under the age of 21 um everyone's sample size um the fact that they kind of deem a woman that looks kind of like every other woman on the street as a what's the thing called uh, a plus size model is derogatory in the extreme and kind of you know other and it kind of otherizes you from a cast of from a cast of models it kind of makes you the kind of black sheep when you're the, known as a plus size model when in fact when in fact you know that's just what regular women look like on the street and um, day to day they don't usually all look like you know Gigi Hadid for instance so it's really interesting that we're now in a position where there's a segment of women who have now tried to reclaim their body shape and size, but they're still being kind of held back and pushed back by kind of structures that have been built by people of their gender, right? From years gone by, decades gone by, they've kind of established this world where, you know, because if you think about other dudes, yes, there are some dudes who, you know, are, are never going to hook up with a fat girl. That's 
facts in it i'm same with their dudes who are probably never gonna rock up with a ginger or with a black girl everyone's got their preference but i think for the most part most dudes are fairly what's that word called most dudes uh most dudes criteria for the women that they'll be in a relationship with or sleep with it's fairly normal it's fairly low there's not the entry the bar of entry is fairly low when it comes to dudes i think most girls will probably notice especially if you've been cheated on and you've seen the other girl that they've cheated the person on with whether or not they're uglier than you or they just have a worse personality whatever it may be you realize that dudes don't really have money standards you know as long as you're a cool person and you're fairly funny and you're cool to hang out with and whatever it is they usually game so this idea that dudes are the ones that are pushing women to be a certain size in order to make them ideal mates is insane because I'd hazard a guess that if you took a pool of obese dudes and a pool of obese women, you'd probably have more women, there'd probably be more women who are in long-term relationships than dudes that are down long-term relationships. It's just a matter of the fact. I don't know why, it just is. What can you do about it? Maybe it's because dudes, when they're bigger, usually get less confident than more confident, which is actually, you know, a uh, counterbalance in terms of how they should be successful with the opposite sex. But regardless... I just feel sorry for people like this, man. I really do. Because really and truly, the change that Tess Holiday could affect if she actually did decide to get healthy and lose some weight so that she was in a position to, you know, look after her kids for a long term. You know, because obviously when you're that side, you just, you know, there's loads of, you know, implicit health uh issues that come up with it. It's just the name of the game, unfortunately. There's just no way to be that big and also healthy in the long term it just isn't possible maybe for a period of time cool but overall it's probably not going to increase your uh life it's probably not going to increase probably not going to increase your increase your life expectancy so that's the issue there um she could actually really really affect change that way and it doesn't mean she has to kind of turn into looking like kate moss no one's saying that but she lost some way and just decided hey this is what i'm happy with this is what's manageable to me this is what's going to allow me to be there for my kids and my family and the charities i've set up all this malarkey then that's cool but it's just this absolute denial that this is a probably advantageous way to go about life. It's just the one that's a bit sad about it. And then you get people like this. So she's got this troll guy here who said this, which is hilarious. But also, you know, it's just a constant. Imagine the constant barrage of, you know, uh, abuse that she must get online just in general when she kind of sticks her head out from the parapet. That also doesn't hurt either, uh, help either. So it says here, um, I think she posted what she posted and somebody tweeted and said, congrats on being in recovery about the anorexia thing. How much do your doctors want you to weigh and when you, when when your weight gets restored? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Obviously kind of poking fun at her anorexia stuff and she had to reply back saying, why do people think this is okay to ask this stuff? Embarrassing and exhausting. And again, I, I shouldn't be laughing, but I have a lot of sympathy for people. It's because I was in that position too when you're big and you're just kind of a bit delusional. Um, you have to kind of have to create your own reality in order to kind of make real life um, easier to kind of function in. But in general, like the real hard truth of it is you just need some tough love. You do need a bit of fat shaming. You do need um, a health scare to kind of really get you into a position where you kind of decide enough is enough. Unfortunately, I don't know why humans need that. We need to reach the end of our line before we really decide um, we need to make a change. And usually those changes are for you. They're more, you know, um, they're more self-serving they're not really for other people in the main i think because you know usually if you feel better about yourself you're usually a better person to hang around with um it's just you know a byproduct of that so it's sad but hey i guess tess she's gonna do what she's gonna do in it we move on we move on what else do we have here ah we have unfortunate news this is courtesy of brighton pride and obviously an indication that quite possibly Notting Hill Carnival isn't going to happen this year. So this is going to see a Brian Pride. It says, Brian and Hove Pride 2020 update. We are heartbroken to have announced that the cancellation of Brian and Hove uh, Pride's community parade, the Brighton Village Parade and the Pride Festival on Saturday, the 7th and Sunday, the 8th of August. So this is August dates are already being cancelled. Um, and I think... I think carnivals around the same time. So if this is if this is it for that, then Jesus. Um, we know that the need for community has never been stronger, and Brighton Hove Pride is one of the Europe's biggest Pride festivals, attracting thousands of popular to thousands of people across the UK to attend um, multiple events 
across the city including the pride lgbtq plus community parade delivering the pride requires an all year round planning cycle working with closely with our partner agencies and while the vaccine rollout continues to be successful many uncertainties that need to be resolved to safely deliver a mass gatherings and the complexity of organizing pride in our city are impossible to achieve in the time that we have so based on the best information available to us we are heartbroken to have to cancel the first second year we cannot risk the health and the safety of our private visitors and residents and hundreds of staff and volunteers that help deliver pride you can read the full announcement there what it means for you you can roll over your ticket donate apply for a refund so obviously heartbreaking news for everybody that wanted to go to pride and again like i said this is a probably pretty much a guarantee that Notting Hill Carnival isn't going to be on this year I don't actually see how they can put on Notting Hill Carnival if they can't put on Pride um, which is concerning I think I was definitely going to go to Notting Hill Carnival this year I haven't been in a while um, it's usually one of our better sort of you know uh, open air sort of festival party things that we have here in London um, usually the vibe is strong I would imagine after this entire time of lockdown the vibe would have been absolutely electric I would have definitely ended up going both days even though it's an absolute trek for me to go there so that plan is probably out the window unless they decide to somehow say i don't know we're gonna make it smaller or something but it looks like anything big anything with a huge group of people um it's just not gonna happen in a way that we want it to happen anymore and it looks like if there is a festival that's on at the moment especially during this the tail end of the vaccine rollout usually everyone that's putting it on they're putting it on despite um having assurances that they're gonna get any sort of coverage in terms of insurance so if you are going to an event you should be really grateful that the event is on because it looks like a lot of people are basically out of pocket if they have, if for some reason a third, fourth wave happens, which touch wood, it, it doesn't. Um, it looks like a lot of these people are taking a real calculated risk that things are going to be okay by putting their event on in general. So if you're definitely going to something, some sort of June 21st party or anything onwards, just save at the moment, behave as well as you can, look after your friends, look after strangers who are near you, and just kind of make the best of the situation because it looks like the bigger events just haven't got a prayer of making them work. Maybe it's because they don't want to encourage people to travel because if you read a statement, it did say, oh, we have people traveling from all over the UK, but really and truly, there are people traveling all over from, from the Europe. I think Brighton Pride, Barcelona Pride, and what's the other one? There's another really big one, maybe Madrid. I don't know which one it is, but maybe there's big ones, right? That people within the LGBT community kind of have in their calendar that they go to every single year. So I'd imagine... If they put it on in August, they can't not guarantee they're going to have an influx of people coming in from other places in Europe to come and go to the event. So they don't want to encourage people to do so. So they'd rather just kind of lock it off, which is a little bit doesn't make that much sense because you'd imagine you'd imagine there'd be a lot of people who are going to travel from parts of Europe, especially if their places are still closed. Yeah, June 21st, because I saw loads of flyers of people for June 21st dates and they had uh, people from traveling over from Berlin traveling over from other parts of Europe so for sure people are going to decide to come over here to party and stuff that's definitely going to happen so if that's going to happen why not just have these events anyway but I'm assuming it's more so an insurance thing local you know council regulations red tape all this malarkey there's a lot of issues that probably go towards um the reason why they probably couldn't put it on but definitely a bad omen for Notting Hill Carnival um I don't think it's going to happen if it does happen then fair play but if it does happen then of course like I said be on your best behavior man because you don't want to get these things taken away because it does look like some of these events are just not guaranteed the way that we think they are especially in the post-covid world man it's just not you know it's not what you kind of would hope would be happening moving on moving on up moving on in we have a news here courtesy of hypebeast Lil yatty is announcing the date of an inaugural release of his nail polish line which makes complete sense right i think in the last few um years it feels like he's kind of really lent into this idea that he has really good fingers or good fingers i sound suspect really good nails really good feet um great skin which is awesome to see right this new generation of rappers coming up who are kind of uh circumventing the sort of um traditional way rappers are sort of viewed and kind of tapping into their individuality which obviously sells nowadays i think the more niche and the more different and the more 
other you are compared to your peers though usually the better that you're going to do especially if your music is good fans are just kind of dying to you know fanboy over somebody that's into some stuff that's a bit alternative look at tyler the creator right odd future they they made an entire career off of being like the you know the opposite of what you'd expect a regular black kid from la or california to kind of be like and i think this announcement from louis Yatti is very congruent to him as a person and it kind of works especially when you kind of think of the kind of trend that we have going on at the moment right you just open your tiktok account and you see a proliferation of flipping dudes with dangly earrings and colored nails right it's a thing that at the moment it's the most it's the most uh, punk thing you can do it's probably the equivalent of wearing a red maga hat if you're like under the age of 21 which is great um i was painting my nose for a while then I just stopped because it's really difficult to do it yourself to kind of make it look nice. Then I didn't want to go to the actual nail salon to get it done because I felt uncomfortable. But I didn't mind. Get, I didn't mind getting them done and wearing them out of public. I just didn't want to be in a nail salon. And usually the nail salon, you know, they're designed for women, so the seats are tiny. The little nail bar, you're kind of all hunched over like an absolute ogre. It just looks a bit odd, and that, that you know that hand posture is strange. I don't know. It just wasn't the right thing for me. So I've always wondered. Um, if there is going to be a future where you're going to have a barbershop because that's one thing I'd always love to have right because I think this is something I was thinking of when maybe when the wire nails was around or one of those kind of hairdress trendy hairdresser shops I was thinking why don't we have a black barbershop or an, a barbershop for you know urban gentlemen that was um, cool that you could go into you could get your hair braided you can get your hair relaxed, you can get your hair coloured, you can get a fade, you can also read some magazines, play pledges in the back, maybe play pool, and then it maybe had a nail bar there too that you could, you know, get your nails touched up. Um, that would be awesome. You can get them coloured, whatever it may be. That would be really cool and it'd make people a lot more comfortable, I think, personally for me, because a nail bar by, you know, by its nature, you'd probably have a couple of girls working on there. You have, you know, maybe a mix of genders in terms of being barbers so it kind of made the vibe a little bit easier because i think that's probably why going in nail bars for me is odd i feel a little bit like what girls feel like when they go to barber shops with their boyfriends you feel like you're flipping chum in the water right your bait everyone kind of turns around like oh who's this fresh meat right even when you're a boyfriend people are just like barbershop guys are so thirsty it's like they've never seen a female in their entire life it's always funny especially when one walks past a window everyone's always kind of breaking their neck so i would imagine if you walked into a barbershop and they had some girls working on the nail bar a couple of girls maybe as barbers it would probably you know so as a boy it would probably make it easier for you to go and get your nails done because you you know it'd be a little bit more of a you know looser vibe in there it wouldn't be as tense but you know maybe that's an idea for the future you know, to open up a barber shop with that's just a cool one that's like a you know uh something that kind of is relevant to what's going on nowadays in terms of how people interact and go around you know you know charge points wi-fi free wi-fi that'd be sick i think that'd be really cool but yeah this is um the news here from hypebeast you've got here little yatty of course with the pictures posing with his nails done with some nail art there and that's the actual gizmo itself i wonder how that works well, what is it do you press down that was pretty cool isn't it it's called crit crete or crit the packaging is pretty cool yeah i'm not gonna lie no homo but he does have good hands man that's what happens when all you do is rap and you know live in your massive mansion in flipping atlanta those hands don't look like they've been toiling in service industry do they <laughs> let's continue it says yeah following from the word last year little yeah has now announced the inaugural release of his fine his, his nail paint line called crete the debut negatives are one collection will feature nail paint reinterpreted with an innovative art pen designed in three matte monochromatic monochromatic shades the new packaging and application design um is part of yeah his goal to make nail painting accessible for all okay also he says if you find painting your nails uh, is a way to show your creative side is an artistic um or it's an artistic sorry or it's an aesthetic that fits you you shouldn't be judged for it outside of an opinion um shouldn't have an effect on your aesthetic and whatever you decide to do this line is a fraction of that said yeah he founded in collaboration with beauty in incubator kinetic brands yeah he looked into the start of create to break the barriers of men's grooming and self-care pushing the movement with crete to empower individuals of all genders and identities to take their self-expression with the for you not them vision little Little Yeti's Crete Nail Paint Negatives 01 collection will be available at Crete's website on May 21st. So I wonder how that gets applied. Can you? The only thing was, was it, um, what's the thing I found hard? Is it cuticles? Whatever that bit is here, that's why I find it hard to paint. Obviously, painting the main bit's okay, but getting the edges right, it was so difficult to do. Um, obviously, he's posing there with them. I wonder how you apply it actually on your nails. What's that look like? What's that video? Is it going to be copyright music? We lock shit down. Yep, pause that so we can't play that. 
But yeah, I wonder how that gets applied. I don't know. I don't really have an idea how it gets applied. If you have no in the in the comments, please let me know how people apply that nail polish onto their actual hands. But it looks pretty cool. Um, I'll be interested to see if this gets picked up. Um, obviously, the Pharrell skincare line did pretty well. It was sell, it, was sell, it kept selling out again and again and again. So I wouldn't be surprised if you see a lot more people kind of tapping into this whole nail polish trend thing with dudes. Um, I'd imagine a lot of those TikTok boys, like those little huddies and who else, I don't know what their names are. They're definitely going to be doing these things next, but these look great. Um, I'd imagine they probably did these in this way for the shoot, so it looks clean, but I wonder if there's a way to create something that could make painting your own nails easy to do, because obviously doing your thumbs is simple, uh, but then it gets, when you start doing your other fingers and you switch from your less, you know, stable hand to the other, because I'm right-handed, it gets a little bit tricky, but you know who knows the future there are many many possibilities next on the list we have news courtesy of supreme they're opening a new store in milan milan they're opening a new store in milan it says on thursday which is today may 6 supreme will open its new location the store is located on correro how would you say that gabria baldi in milan is open from monday to saturday 11 to 7 30 there's a great retail hours in there when i used to work in retail you should have to get there at 9 a.m sometimes 10 and stay until like 8 it was insane half an hour breaks and then when i got more responsibility while i was given a promo when i was given a promotion i got one pound extra on my hourly wage which was you know heavenly and i also was required <laughs> to be in the store for way more hours I, sometimes i spend 13 16 hours a day in the store you know covering for people deliveries all that stuff i wasn't the best at it don't get me wrong um you know ended quite unsorry unsorry mostly whether that word is i wasn't the best at it i think i was the best on the shop floor when it came to responsibilities of managing a team especially when you retail like high like you know uh, city center retail it's another level it's a whole different beast the people that you're bumping into is just insane i'd imagine fashion retail managing people on these sort of teams is probably a lot easier um in some extent but i think if you work in an actual retail store like a proper one it's just impossible to especially at my age at that time manage people who are you know a couple years older a couple years younger than me it was just a recipe for disaster and maybe i just didn't have the leadership capabilities to do so who knows but regardless this is the milan store um it looks absolutely gorgeous you got some uh nate lauman obviously insulation and artwork all over there you know in tight to tie in with the other locations but it looks gorgeous in it it looks really really cool i'm not going to lie it's definitely going to be um, a reason to visit Milan now, isn't it? Which is odd, isn't it? But that's kind of what people do, especially people that have the interest that I have. You usually travel either to go to clubs and different festivals, to eat at certain restaurants, um, to see certain bands play, to go to certain retail stores, right? Those are usually the reason why you go and travel. And it's odd, it's weird, it's interesting because it usually gives you a great reason to see, you know, different parts of the world that you probably wouldn't see it's pretty awesome it kind of taps you in because immediately when you go to milan you'll be like oh where's the best hotels or where's the best airbnbs where's the best art gallery where's the best restaurants it immediately kind of boosts the local economy having these sort of stores enter there so i'm sure the local uh, retailers around restaurants and shops will be super happy bars and stuff you know imagine all the dive bars around there will be super happy there'll be a, a plethora of flipping skaters around I'm, I'm, i don't know if that's maybe a spot people go and skate anyway but i'd imagine spots around there will turn into skate spots there'll be chill spots that people will turn will turn into that go on a weekend and shit it just kind of gives the whole place a boost but it looks gorgeous isn't it all open plan nice as ever it reminds you of the first time going to flipping um new york supreme store to that 2000 eight nine ten around that kind of a time um this is a time when i was obsessed with the brand do you do i had so many things from it now i have a few things but i don't have as many as i did before still kind of keep an eye on them from afar and still think you know by and large it's still the best brand out in it when it comes to streetwear when it comes to longevity um when it comes to consistency there's just no one that does it as good as them it's just is what it is and it? everyone's sort of like copying or sort of like you know copying the blueprint that they laid down in their own way but essentially you know they're just a league on above their own and I remember kind of doing a pilgrimage to go to New York to go visit the Supreme Store and being a bit worried because obviously you read a lot of accounts of people going to Supreme Store back in the day and it was, especially the one in New York, it was the vibe was horrendous, right? People would vibe you out, rude, um, they wouldn't listen to you, you weren't allowed to touch stuff on the racks, like just, you know, really tense environment. But then as soon as you go to a skate shop in London, a place like Slam City Skates, for instance, and you're from ENDS and you look like the way I look like, 
and you go into a skate shop there's no way you're going to be ever scared to go to anyone to get to get vibed out you won't be worried because the way that i got vibed out going into those skate stores when i was like 15 14 was insane they were such cunts like proper proper pricks to this day that's probably why to this day i still have such a um visceral hatred for all that palace group people because they were the same right like absolute cunts of people that are actually from ends and they try to reappropriate and larp with the kind of dress sense and the culture and the cultural sort of like influences that you grew up around they try and kind of adopt them in a sort of cosplay sort of way but then when the real version of that comes around they try and act a little bit big timey i don't know what it was oh it's super odd and obviously as time progressed sam c skates got a lot more because i think at the time i went there was a lot of i forgot what his name was his name pullman that guy was really nice i forgot something pullman i forgot his name um obviously who's the other guy that was a prick that ended up being cool after um jake but again i think that was because i came in with some people that he knew and then suddenly started sucking you know that kind of stuff started sucking your dick from there but i really got a bad bad time in those stores and again this wasn't me saying anything i was going there super quiet i wouldn't say a word i'd have my camera strapped to my back and my skateboard just being a kid trying to like get you know get involved in culture and i'd be completely iced out so that was a bad sort of like you know precedent but when i went to new york to visit the supreme store they were so nice and this was back in the day when that i don't know what, what his name is but he's in a couple of the shoots the blonde kid the white dude i think i don't know it don't matter but a lot of the people that i saw in the lookbooks were there too and they were safe they let us touch the clothes like we were all from london with like 15 of us or 10 15 of us and they were really nice they let us kind of do what we wanted in there and it kind of made me think oh okay it's just you know it's a decision that you make not everyone has to be out. it's of course the one thing you know is when you go into supreme store the music is hella loud and it? it's probably the only retail store you ever find where the music is probably you know at a level where you might expect you're in a club somewhere you have to sometimes shout at the sales assistants to get um to kind of inform them what size and stuff that you want in a particular sort of garment it's insane how loud it is and it's so 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 loud um but yeah it looks beautiful man it looks beautiful i'm not going to lie it looks absolutely great and then we've obviously got um, great installations in there. And then we've also got a uh, indication on what the store tea is going to be like when they open up, you know, Passion of the Christ um, artwork there, you know, courtesy of the Don Leonardo da Vinci. Um, I think, I'm not sure if I'm, from, if I'm mistaken this, but I'm pretty sure when Supreme did that shutdown thing and they sued that illegal shop that was selling all the Fugazi Supreme stuff, I'm pretty sure they had a t-shirt, a box of a t-shirt in there that had the last supper illustration done in the box logo obviously the box logo was the size the width of the entire tea but i'm pretty sure they did it so if they if that is true and supreme purposely did this tea as a kind of homage or as a sort of petty you know jab at that old store that's a very very good little um, good little get back in it i'm pretty sure that is true maybe, maybe i'm mistaken this i'm not remembering this right but i'm pretty sure you know, the back has got grazi of course there stamp printed on looking wise and i was thinking in terms of models if they decide to go out and do lookbooks and do some cool shoots and stuff i'd love it because as they always do when they kind of open up a store in a certain location they always tap into the local scene and get people that are actually tied to the local community um you know the country at large uh, to actually represent the brand it's the best way to do it and they've always done great i think that kind of comes from the james jebbia thing of not being a skater right that's the whole premise right he kind of set up supreme as basically uh he thought that our skaters deserved uh better clothing right there's a better quality of clothing um the culture was so rich but then he was also aware that because he wasn't a skater he couldn't be the one selling it to skaters so he basically opened up the store and employed you know the best of the best from that local community to basically represent the brand and kind of give it legitimacy which obviously helped and i think they do the same thing with the lookbooks and stuff and and the models they choose is sort of a good way to kind of immediately sort of plug yourself in it's sort of like their way of like um checking in in the clothing way so what better way to do it than tapping into some of the proliferate of flipping Italian rappers out there. I don't understand a word of it, but I love a few of these guys. My one um, suggestion would be to maybe involve Packy. I think he's from Naples. Um, I'm familiar with him because I watched Gomorrah. So I was looking for guys that are from those bad blocks in Naples where, you know, it's completely, it's, it's crime ridden 
quite poor area but there's also a lot of great artistic talent that comes out of it obviously Gamora being great you know uh, place for uh, a great TV series and obviously a good representation of that whole gang mafia sort of cartel uh, thing that they have going on over there and this dude is really good um, his videos are incredible his name's Packy of course which is funny if you're from the UK you'll know what that basically means in terms of the derogatory term to describe people from Pakistan but he spells it with a P-K-Y so the P-A-K-I right yeah um, he's pretty cool I think Packy would be a good model for Supreme going forward um, I also think this guy called Sefera Basta or Fera, Sefera Sefera Basta I'm pretty sure he's signed to Def Jam as well he speaks English which is obviously a good thing there's obviously a picture here with him with a little Fugazi Supreme uh, what's that thing called plaster on his face um, he sold out a couple shows here in the UK I think he came here recently to O2 I think he sold out maybe a thousand seat arena um, he's obviously you know looks the part in that kind of sense i'm not really a fan of the music sonically myself but yeah, i think he'd be a good fit as well um and then who else do we have here and then of course if you want to go down the young leany sort of vibe way you got this guy called ketamana Ket ketamana is it how you pronounce it ketama 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 126 he'd probably be a good option as well going forward in terms of repping the supreme brand going in but who knows they might completely twist it and just decide to just go for other european countries and just to represent all the other you know supreme stores in europe but i think that'd be a good way to tap in and kind of however did they even have french rappers in the paris store i'm not too sure but i think that'd be cool to see them featured on there i'm sure their, their music is going to be blazing in the store itself so that'd be cool to check out but these will be some good artists to maybe get involved when that thing happens in it but yeah big up supreme opening the new store in milan cannot wait to visit cannot wait to visit let's see how much time i've used up so far already an hour and five in that's good what else do we have here we did that we did this 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 we did that i think that's it, in it. yeah let's maybe end it there I'm already 105 in. I don't want to waste any more of your time. But anyway, thanks for checking in the Agassino Zinga Show, episode number, what are we? 456, isn't it? Thanks for tuning in. So, thanks so much for tuning in. It's been a pleasure to have your company. If it's your first time to check out the show, you know what to do. Smash a like button, subscribe, leave me a comment down below. If you're listening via the podcast app, please give me a five star review. Share the show. Share the show if you can. That'll be greatly appreciated. And I'll see you guys again very soon. Take care. Peace. 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 Peace.